thanks for having me. I'm Terry. I am a 26 year old marketing and communications professional. I'm currently a proposal manager at Spare, a transportation startup based here in Vancouver, British Columbia. On the side, I also freelance. I do freelance writing for different software as a service companies based mainly in Canada. And that's just a little bit about me in general. I think this is a very cliche answer, but I really didn't not know what I wanted to do. Uh, I chose to study communication at SFU because I felt like the program just opened the door to a lot of different opportunities, ranging from communications to digital marketing to journalism and public relations. So I first chose that program because I felt like I could prolong that decision-making process. I now work in SAS because I feel like that's where the future is headed and I really fell in love with uh, writing as a career path just because I've always enjoyed reading and I did a lot of writing when I was studying communications. Really it's all about essays when you're in that program. And from there I just started picking up different clients that needed help with copy and things like that. So that's how I kind of got to where I am today. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, when I was studying at SFU at the time, I decided to come back from exchange and just get more involved in the community there. So I joined this association called Student Marketing Association. And what was really great about that community was I built a lot of connections, especially just joining an account for a semester. So that year I happened to join an account and was placed in a project team of three people. And we were basically managing um, how to grow a SaaS company's content marketing platform to their audience for, via social media. So that's basically how I landed my first client. After the semester, I was able to build pretty good relationships with their CEO and their director of marketing. And once the semester was over, they decided to hire me full time or I guess not full time, part time to manage their copywriting and social media. So if there's any big takeaway for landing your first client is really just like find out what you enjoy doing, going out there and network where you can be yourself. And usually if you're yourself, uh, those people will be attracted to you and they'll likely want to work with you more. So I'd say that's how I landed my first role. It's a great question because, you know, nine to five, nine to fives are busy and you only have so many hours in a day. How I personally decompress is just making sure that my, you know, like moving my body is a number one priority. Um, for me, I try to schedule in at least three runs a week and if I'm not running then I'll at least go work out for 30 minutes or so just to decompress and let my mind drift off from other things that aren't work related. One thing that I live and swear by is Google Calendar because I personally time block a lot of my day to days and I also use Reclaim which is a great tool that actually pulls in different times of your day where there's a free session and they'll give you a lunch time or they'll give you an afternoon catch up time. I really try my hardest to follow those time blocks. And then from there, um, I also use Notion a lot. My best friend Angel also is a Notion database master and she basically showed me how to create a system that works for me so that I feel like I can empty out all of the different tasks and action items that I have to do, whether that's my nine to five or my freelance writing. All of that is just captured in Notion so that every day that I finish my nine to five, I can go back to that central source of truth and just go from there. Definitely just making, well, the first one is like never stop learning. I think when I just jumped right into freelancing, my biggest priority was to gain as, acquire as many clients as possible and just try to sell myself that way. But a lot of the times it can get very easy to just forget that you also need to save time to learn and just keep up to date with industry trends. That would be one thing. Um, the second thing is something that I touched on earlier is just making mental health a priority. When you are a freelancer, you're juggling multiple hats. You're doing like the marketing, the selling, the accounting and everything else that you probably never thought about. And it's really easy to lose track of that and just get swept up in it, especially if you're also managing a nine to five. So that's the second thing I would really think about um, earlier on. And the last one being is probably just making sure I have the systems and tools in place um, as the foundation. 
before I jump right into all the freelancing opportunities. So if I don't have, you know, the Notion databases in place, or I don't know what communication tools I'm using to speak with my clients or how I'm going to invoice them, I feel like jumping right in without those processes in place, it's, it's just not a good idea. I think for anybody who's interested in freelance writing as a career, I would say start by looking out at what other freelance writers are doing in, in the industry. Maybe there are some really good freelance writers local to your area or there's some really famous freelance writers who share their experiences on YouTube. I would first just look at how they do things because there are a lot of, like I mentioned, systems and tools that you need to create in place to be successful in the long run. I do think freelance writing as a career specifically requires someone that's very, you know, uh, you have a close attention to detail and you're highly organized because writing and making sure you're time blocking for that requires deep focus. And a lot of the times, like we've all heard of writer's block, but you really do need to understand how you best operate day to day and when you should be spending that time writing and when you should be spending time, that time researching. Something that I've been doing more recently over the last two years is actually I used to write, research, and edit all in one go, whereas now I tend to block that out on specific tasks. So if you're interested in freelance writing and you've experienced writer's block to some extent, I would highly recommend just spending some time researching. Maybe you could do that for you know three to five articles or three to five pieces, and then block out another section of time to write, and then lastly for editing. I find that extremely helpful when you're doing freelance writing as well. Oh, definitely, especially for someone, someone like me. I've always been studying communications, never really a math person, never really took accounting classes. So I was definitely more like, don't really want to touch that side of the freelancing world. But um, funny story, when I first acquired my very first SaaS client from the Student Marketing Association. I remember uh, reaching out to the, to the director of marketing and she said, you know, invoice me and we'll pay you out. And I had nobody to turn to. So essentially I had lived off of Microsoft Word files and Microsoft Excel files and I would just create an invoice based on the templates that they would provide. And every single month I would basically just change the invoice number and change the dates. But the problem was I wasn't creating a folder structure that worked for me and to scale into the long term. So it was really frustrating for the first two years or so up until when I found Cashew. And so ever since I became a Cashew user, it's just been life changing. I invoice all of my clients using Cashew's accounting app and I track all my invoices there as well. So it really gives me a sense of control because I can see where my cash flow sits it's all of a bird's eye view. I can see the income and I can see the money that's leaving. For any freelancers or entrepreneurs just starting out and they really don't know how or where to send their first invoice and you don't wanna use Microsoft Word, I would probably recommend using Truly Small. Truly Small Invoices is just a really quick and simple tool that you can use for, to send your first few invoices. And the best part is it's free, it's easy to use. It's the one that I've used when I first started out as well. I would say one that I mentioned earlier was Reclaim. I've been obsessed with this tool. I mean, it's basically free and it time blocks my day for me. So I would highly re recommend Reclaim for somebody who's just starting to get a little bit more organized, who lives and follows their Google Calendar religiously. Um, the best part is like I'm all about the aesthetics too. So you can use it to color code different things so that, you know, your personal commitments are lavender and afternoon and morning catch ups are blue. It's just beautiful. The second tool that I definitely swear by is also another tool that I've been talking and raving about in this video. It's Notion. I love Notion and I'm also biased because you know my nine to five we use Notion as our hand company handbook so I know it pretty much inside out but also I use it to manage my freelance tasks as well as working with my freelance uh, projects and different action items so I would say the database feature of Notion is just like second to none and the final tool that I basically don't want to live without as a freelance writer is Hemingway app it's a super easy to use tool where I usually use to plug in the content that I've been writing or editing for a while. Uh, usually just to make sure my, you know, my active 
active sentences are in the right place, there's not too many passive sentences, and just to move the copy around in a way that's a lot more engaging and exciting to read as a reader. Um, sometimes I do get writer's block from editing, so I just use that and I plug in all my content and I can reorganize it to make it um, basically optimized for the web. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Terry. We hope to see you on the channel a lot more in the future. If you guys have any questions for Terry, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. If you guys want to follow Terry on her platforms, what are your platforms, Terry? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, on LinkedIn as well. My Instagram handle is T E R R I L N G. And if you want to read some of Terry's awesome writing, you can find her writings on our blog, both on Cashew and Truly Small. Do you want to leave us any famous last words? For sure. It's not famous, but it's coming from me. You know more than you think. Thank you, Terry. Yay! Yay. <laughs>